You didn't choose to travel like this. But you can choose to travel like this. And enjoy more of this. This. And this. It's a new stay. This is Courtyard. Open up Pizza Hut's new $10 dinner box. All your favorites, all in one place. A medium one-topping pizza, freshly baked breadsticks and cinnamon sticks, plus marinara and sweet icing for dipping. Best of all, the $10 dinner box is only $10, and only at your Pizza Hut. Klondike presents Five Seconds to Glory. Oh, this is the dreaded hand circle. City versus United, 2.30 Monday on ESPN and ESPN3. Welcome back, everybody, to New York at Radio City Music Hall. Our Bud Light fan forum question from the Bud Light Facebook page come from John Vincent in Wallingford, Connecticut, or as we call it, us locals, Wally World. What do the Bengals need to compete with the Steelers and the Ravens? And they made the playoffs. But they obviously, everybody looks up at the Steelers and the Ravens. What do they need? They need some of the Steelers and Raven players to retire. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. Coming. <laughs> Wide receiver, corner. Yeah, you helped out the offensive line. We'll see what happens here. But I think to keep up, you got to get Andy Dalton some help. Got A.J. Green. Got Gresham. Got some components. You had some injuries in that secondary with Leon Hall. That's a uh, big question going into this season. Well, I picked Drake Kirkpatrick yesterday, cornerback, and uh, moved down and got a guard, Kevin Zeitler, from Wisconsin. Now, here they go. To announce the Cincinnati Bengals selection, please welcome, from San Diego State, the 15th overall pick of the 1973 draft by the Bengals, wide receiver Isaac Curtis. With the 53rd pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Devin Steele. Defensive tackle, Penn State. By the way, we said about Wesley Walker, here's another one, Isaac Curtis. In the league fast, out of the league fast. Here's a player that played large through a a season in Penn State that no one will ever forget for different, for unusual reasons. Yeah, but I'll tell you, he put it all together this year. He had some injury issues, some durability concerns during his career. You can make an argument he was a one-year wonder, but this season he played exceptionally well, showed a lot of leadership ability, 17 and a half tackles for loss for kids 6'5", 305, strong in the upper body, has some quickness. He's a cousin of Bart Still. Excellent player for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a cousin of LeVon Kirkland. Remember him with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So great bloodlines for Davon Still. And for a kid this year to put it all together the way he did and rise up in his performance level, went through the roof based on what you saw early in his career, just glimpses. The injuries held him back. Didn't go to the senior bowl because of a minor injury. But on the field this year, number 71, made things happen against the run, got some pressure on the quarterback, showed he had some quickness, beat that guard center combination block. I thought he did a nice job. The question is, can he be consistent year to year, which is something at Penn State wasn't the case. Well, he's got a good club, good swim move. He's really good when he's on the move, when they're slanting their front. Mm -hmm. Big 10 defensive player of the year, the Bengals lost Frosty Rucker. I like this pick at this point in the draft. Yeah, you still think, uh, John, about this team moving forward. Wide receiver for Dalton to help out A.J. Green. Another corner. You added one, you still need another one in this past half the NFL. Trying to match up in coverage. Got an issue with age with the one kid. Got another one all coming off the injury list. Clements getting up there. Paul coming off the injury. So I think you look at this team defensively. What helps the back end? Defensive line does. And I think certainly for Cincinnati in a division that is powerful, balanced. You added Trent Richardson at Cleveland. You got Ray Rice to deal with. Got good quarterback play in that division with Roethlisberger and Flacco. Now you got Brandon Whedon going to Cleveland. I'll tell you, that's going to be a very competitive division. Has been all along. Best rivalry in the NFL, Steelers and Ravens. Now they don't play until what, week 11 and week 13 this year. But the Bengals, they think they're there. Can they maintain it? Andy Dalton and A.J. Green are a great starting point. Can they maintain it? The Bengals have had three winning seasons the last 21 years. And by that, I mean, you know, a couple times they made the playoffs recently. But then they fall back. 
it's one thing to, to make a run one year at really good teams like Pittsburgh and Baltimore, another year to sustain it. So is this the year that they keep up there? That's our Monday night opener. Cincinnati and Baltimore, that's the opening Monday night game. Well, they've got a lot more difficult schedule this year, no question. But if you just write down the players that the Steelers lost, key leaders and great Steeler players, mm -hmm. Hines Ward, James Ferrier, we could keep talking names. And the Ravens lost some quality football players from Ben Grubbs to Jarrett Johnson. So the Bengals added three pretty good players. They continue to push along. They have a good young quarterback good young receiver if they can get a couple more pieces I think they're closing the gap now here's another team that's closing the gap that hadn't made the playoffs since 1999 and began 5 and 0 in thunderous fashion and then made the playoffs and talking about the Detroit Lions so can they keep going they got in there as we said first winning season even since uh, 2000 first playoff since 99 Against the playoff teams, well, it didn't go so well, but they're, they're learning. And, boy, they saw what a healthy year for Matthew Stafford would be in 5,000 yards. Calvin Johnson off the charts at wide receiver. Unfortunately, the defense with impact players off the charts for the wrong reasons at times. They got a little off track. But in Dominic and Sue and company, and we really didn't see fairly on a consistent basis, this is excitement. Now, where does Detroit go this year? Talk about maybe the Bengals moving. I know Detroit's looking up at Green Bay. Chicago will be back. Detroit, to me, is a team that really bears watching because they may have added maturity, we hope, to the ability which they showed on the field because when they look good, they looked really good. Can we agree on I mean, I mean they look thunderous at times. Defense is a big problem, John. I, yep. You look at that football team, boom, they, they couldn't stop anybody. Matthew Stafford had to go out there and try to match points. I mean, every every it was like basically trying to hold serve, and they couldn't on defense. So the bottom line is Matthew Stafford, Calvin Johnson, you had Pettigrew, you added some pieces around him. Running back's a big concern as well. You think about this football team and what they did. Riley Reef that helps out Matthew Stafford. Got hit too much, but the defense has got to get better. It would help if they had a running back they could hand the ball to and right. shorten the game. This defense is out there all the time. They don't have a running back on their team that ran for more than 400 yards. Javid Best has issues, and it sure is unknown where his status is right now. Here's a back. Yeah. To announce the Detroit Lions selection, please welcome from Oklahoma State University the third overall pick in the 1989 draft by the Lions, Hall of Fame running back Barry Sanders. With the 54th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Ryan Broyles, wide receiver, University of Oklahoma. Can I, can I just say something about that? He and Gail Sayers, for running backs, universally loved, no matter what city you bring him in front of a podium. Now on to 2012. This is a great pick right here. I was hoping to see Ryan Broyles go earlier. Reminds me of a lot of guy I had in Oakland and Tim Brown. He's the all-time leading receiver in college football. Had an injury this year against Texas A&M to his ACL. I've seen this kid line up in the slot. He runs wicked double moves, tremendous hands, week-to-week-to-week -week -week production, great competitor. Reminds me of a young Tim Brown, Derek Mason type receiver that's going to really flourish in this Lion offense. Only thing I can say is, He's added to the arsenal, the offensive arsenal. He's a heck of a player, 349 career receptions. But the defense, that's a huge question mark, and you haven't addressed it yet. So at some point in time, you got to stop people, and you got to add some personnel to that football team on the defensive side of the ball. Just a detail. Just a minor detail. <laughs> when we return here, the second round rolling toward the bottom. Atlanta on the clock for the first time of this draft. So we'll talk some Falcons and Steelers and Broncos again when we return to Radio City Music Hall in New York. Call Dave. This is Dave. Hey, just got off work. The conditions are looking pretty good. 
With standard color touch radio system, Bluetooth connectivity, and backup camera. The 32 Highway MPG GMC Terrain. The only thing more.